Dusty, what is the uh, addition of Graveman and then Montero coming up just do for your bullpen, uh, especially on the heels of, uh, you know, probably one of your toughest losses that was sort of bullpen related? Well, I mean, he gives us uh, <clears throat> uh, a lot of interchangeable parts. Um, he gives us a, a couple guys that have uh, uh, both closed and pitched in uh, high leverage situations at the end of the game and uh, gives us some, uh, you know, some more quality uh, firepower and gas at the end of the, uh, you know, in the bullpen to go along with what we have now. So, uh, uh, you know, we're happy about it. Uh, I mean, we hate to see Joe, uh, Joe Smith go because he's a big part of this team and a big part of bullpen and a, one, of the, one of the highest quality people I've ever met. And, and, uh, and Toro, his future is very, very bright and he was coming on pretty, you know, pretty strong for us, and he helped save us during, uh, you know, Bregman's absence. But you know, a trade is is a trade that's supposed to be both, you know, good for both sides. And in uh, modern times, it seems like most teams are trading to try to win the deal. But this is a, uh, you know, a trade that's that's going to benefit both. The room. Dusty, understanding that you've never met, but that you've probably never met Graven in person. Um, he's been the or closer, Montero. Been the, or Montero, um, mm -hmm. but, but specifically with Graveman, um, he's been the Mariners closer all year. You've obviously got a, a closer that's performed very well all year. How do you plan to, um, how do you plan to delegate duties there? And how do you plan to kind of balance that out? Well, I'm, I'm going to talk to him first. Communication is the key. And like, uh, you know, last night's situation, I mean, you saw, you know, that he came in as a, as a setup man. And, uh, you know, I, I, I plan initially, you know, to, uh, you know, Lee Presley as, as our closer, this guy's an all-star, he's an outstanding job, but you see that uh, a lot of times we can't use him three days in a row. So, you know, that might be a day uh, instead of going by committee, it might be a day to, to try to plan to have, um, you know, Montero, I'm sorry to have Graveman and Montero's also closed games all at the same time. So uh, we're just going to have to sit down and figure out the best uh, way to use these guys, figure out, you know, the resiliency of their arms and how they uh, respond back to back or even back to back to back. And, you know, it gives us some, uh, some very valuable options. Jake Kaplan. The fact that you're playing the Mariners right now is kind of a weird wrinkle to this this trade. And clearly Toro knew for a while since he was taking infield practice with them before it was even announced. Uh, just what was your day like and find, when did you find out this was happening? How did you inform the players? Just any kind of uh, insight into the, the process? Well, I mean, I found out, I found out um, I was in um, uh, Nordstrom's buying a pair of shoes. And, uh, you know, I was, uh, then James called me and said, this might, uh, this in the process, you know, might go down. And uh, then probably 10 seconds after I hung up off talking to James, it was a might at that point in time. And then Toro and, and, and Straw walked by me in Nordstrom's. And so, um, you know, and then I passed a couple other players and, you know, like uh, to form not to say anything because it might not have, happened it might not have been completed and so and then when I found out it was completed is when I got here you know to the stadium Dusty what's impressed you about Graveman this season uh, well just, just the fact that he throws he throws hard he throws strikes he throws quality strikes and uh, you know I mean there aren't many guys that can set up or close or if we need him earlier uh, like again, I got to talk to him to find out the resiliency of his arms, you know, his likes, his dislikes, you know, how long it takes him to warm up or can he warm up, sit down and get back up. And there's a few things because every time that you make a trade for a player or lose a player, it changes the dynamics and the personality of your team. And it takes a little while to, uh, you know, for guys to, you know, get acclimated. I mean, uh, you know, unless I heard he's a very popular guy over there in their clubhouse. And, uh, you know, perhaps he might even be like Michael Brantley, who 
fit in, I heard right away here, became a leader, uh, you know, this team before I got here. So uh, again, um, you know, we have to meet him and talk to him and and find out as much as we can about him. Ryan Bearfield. Dusty, have you gotten a chance to talk to Toro or will that come at the end of this series? No, no, I talked to Toro. I talked to Toro, uh, you know, a few moments ago. And then uh, just, just told him this is, I think, the first time this has happened to, to me on a team that I've been on. I've heard about it happening before, where a guy just walks across. I mean, they'll be talking about this forever, where a guy just walks across the clubhouse and changes uniforms. And I remember when I was with the Gi Giants a long time ago, they had guys uh, go over and change uniforms in the middle of a double hitter. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, this, uh, this is adds to the history and the legacy of, of the Houston Astros.